Hello everybody, it's Aaron. Welcome to another episode of Feed the Beast. Uh, before I do anything today, I want to give a very special thank you. I got a brilliant suggestion from a subscriber, Dogen T. I'm going to assume that that's how you pronounce that. Assuming it's also a male, he suggested that I use a router with a machine filter to evenly split the platinum dust between the centrifuges, and it works beautifully. So if you're having the same problem, um, maybe you should look into that too. While I was setting this up, I noticed that the router will actually see all the machines in the room here, though when I tested, it actually would not put anything in any of the machines. It just saw them because they were close by. Uh, so what I'm going to do today is I want to automate the creation of the iridium iron ingots and the iridium plates and then um, probably the industrial blast furnace as well. Real quick before we do this, I talked to Sam about the world download and it goes up automatically every Monday at the same link. So I'll put it in the description and probably in the description of every video from here on out. I'm not sure what time it happens on Monday, but um, Tuesday would be a good day to download the world if you would like to do so. So I had some problems with this rolling machine set up and I already have the pattern. The problem I had with it was it actually didn't do anything. You have to set the thing in the machine first. You have to put all the ingredients in and it keeps one in there and then uh, it makes the second one. So I'm going to try that and we're just going to pop an interface on top here. Hopefully it sees it and I'm not going to put an, an import bus on the back just yet. But basically, I just have to put the recipe in here now, and then I'll make four more iridium ingots, and we'll see what happens. Unfortunately, you cannot use this for multiple things. I was hoping that I could use it for um, the advanced alloy as well, or the uh, the mixed metal ingots, but that that doesn't work. I think I have to make a separate rolling machine for that. But those are really the only two things I use a rolling machine for, so that's not that big of a deal. Uh, I'll just make another one if I want to do that. So if we put that there, it puts the little thing. So let's run upstairs. Actually, we'll link book up there. And we'll grab about a, a half a stack of UU matter. And we'll make some more iridium. That's my machine filter thing right there. The machine filter, um, since I happen upon this, when you make this logic matrix identifier, it actually takes the, the programmer as part of the recipe, but it does not consume the programmer. So you can make as many of these and you get to keep the programmer. So that's not, that's not that big of a deal but I was looking for a few more of them to do this and then I made one and uh, I was pleasantly surprised. So let's make four iridium ingots. I've got the pattern set in the compressor downstairs so it makes them automatically and then we'll go to the terminal downstairs. I've got plenty of advanced alloy and diamond dust in there right now. I have patterns for diamond dust but not for the uh, advanced alloy. So I want to do craft and we'll just do one of those and it's making. So when I tried it the first time this was all empty and I, I couldn't figure out what was wrong with it and then Sam told me that you actually have to put the ingredients in there. So you're going to waste four iridium ingots, four advanced alloys and one diamond dust while doing this but uh, I think it's worth it because you don't have to mess with anything and then you're supposed to pull out the back and it did so now we have this in the system so now we need to go upstairs 
And the way I I already recorded this episode once, I'm re-recording, so all my cable is already run. All I really have to do is place the routers and the buses and then tell them what to do. So how we're going to do this, we're going to put a router here, one here, and then one on the back. And we're going to tell this guy to insert into the bottom side. And we're going to tell this guy to insert into the top side. And this guy is going to extract. See, it already started working. Extract from the south side. And it shouldn't. It shouldn't have taken that out yet, but that's all right. We'll work it out. Forget which side I did last time. Maybe it was the east side or the west side. But apparently you can insert north, south goes right here as well. So what we'll do is we'll hook this up and we'll tell the thing to send the iridium iron ingot to there and we'll make one plate. And then it should, this guy should take the stuff out. So uh, let's set up the export bus first. And I don't want to hook up the import bus yet in case we have to test it at all. Uh, see, that one's the, the bottom one. So we're going to put the industrial TNT here. I want to throw this back into the system. And then I want to tell it to craft it. So that this will always be full of industrial TNT. <clears throat> and then this one, the inserts into the top, is going to have iridium alloy ingots. So if we throw that back into the system, it's going to take it a second because it's got to go through the sorting machine and the pneumatic tubes. And that takes, I don't know, 10 or so seconds. Um, but we should see it pop in here in just a second. And then um, the thing should start working. Yep, there it goes. Now, our dark ashes did not get taken out. But if you notice, there's no plate right here. So um, that is probably because I don't have the import bus hooked up to this router. If we take this out, then there goes all our dark ashes. So the west side works for this machine due to the way I placed it. So you may have to play around with it depending on which way your machine is facing. Um, see, this is the west side. That is the side that it worked last time as well. So that is excellent. And the reason I want to do this with routers is because um, you cannot access the bottom of this because this part that says T and T on it, that's actually the machine. The casing doesn't count um, in my testing. So the router was the easiest way. So I wanted to put the other routers behind it so you can only see the one router and then there will be a wall right here like there was before. So if we get this guy back here, that's it. That is now automated for the iridium plates. Now this one is a little trickier because you cook more than one thing in the industrial blast furnace. I basically use it for um, silicon plates. That's, that's basically it. Unfortunately, there's no way to tell the ME export bus to send two plates. It'll only send either a stack or one at a time. So um, that's kind of a problem, but um, may not be that big of a deal. I thought about putting an interface on this. And actually, we could do that, and then it would do it when I want it to. Let's do it that way. What the hell? We'll see. I don't get that back. I guess I have to silk touch it. What is that? Hardened glass? 
I could have sworn you got that back. Um, so what we'll do, we'll put an interface here, and then we'll just put a, an import bus on the side. Hopefully, the import bus will, will take it out. I happen to have a few silicon cells right here, and we're just going to need a plate and an interface. So basically what we'll do is um, we're going to have to make a pattern, I guess. And we're going to tell it that we want two cells for one plate. We're going to encode that. And I'm doing this part on the fly. This isn't how I did it last time, but I think this will work just fine. I'm assuming they go in the top there, and then I'm also assuming that the empty cells will come out of the left side, but I don't know that for a fact. So we're actually going to test that out. Um, let's see. Put an import bus right there, and then some ME cable right here, and then we'll just connect it, if I can connect it, like that. So we're going to see a little bit of cabling and stuff, but that's not that big of a deal. Uh, I can also uh, put the aluminum recipe in there if I want, or I could put, well, I don't think I could do that. Never mind. I was going to say I can put an export bus with aluminum dust so that it automatically goes through there, but I think I'll probably have to make a pattern. So we'll put that pattern in there and we'll come over here. We'll put all four of these cells in here, and we're going to make two of these because we have four cells. So we'll do begin, and it should send two cells in here. There are already two cooking, and as soon as they're done, we'll get the silicon plate and the empty cells over here, and I'm curious to see if the import bus pulls them out on that side. If not, we'll just have to run it over the top or something. Not that big of a deal. Uh, I just wanted to keep the wiring sort of compact. And what I'm also gonna do is I'm going to probably, we'll let this finish and see what happens before I go on. Cross your fingers. Cool. So it does pull out from either side. So that's excellent. So since I've got that, what I can do is I can just put up a wall like I had it. Like that. And then like that. So it is minimally invasive, I suppose you could call it. And then I'll fill in the ME cable with red brick. Um, what I may also do is, see this is a centrifuge uh, where I get the silicon cells from. I'll probably, not sure how I want to set this up. Um, I've been electrolyzing sand to get the silicon cells or clay dust. So I guess what I could do is I could put a... Um, a level emitter on an export bus with sand to say that when there are um, less than 10 silicon cells in the system to send uh, more sand to the system to get more silicon cells and then I'll ac actually have to put one on bottom for the um, the empty cells or if there's room over here, I might do this one with routers. I don't know. I'm going to figure that out after the episode. But uh, it's basically the same principle as the stuff over here. So this should now be empty. It is. Uh, if I wanted to make an aluminum pattern or anything else that goes in the blast furnace, I could do so. Um, unless it takes two things, in which case I would have to put something on bottom as well. But... 
really I could do that stuff manually. I, I can do the silicon cells or the silicon plates on demand for the most part. So that is my method for, this thing is in the way, I'm trying to get a view here. Um, that's my method for doing this. Uh, I don't know if there are other ways to do this or not, but the routers seem like the easiest way for me. So that is the way I did it. And let me see. That was only 15 minutes, much shorter than the last episode. Um, the amount of energy I'm giving this thing it goes up a percent about every three seconds during the day, which is pretty cool. So about every five minutes or so, I get you matter if it's light. And I've gone through all the scrap boxes, and all I've got left is the uranium dust. So I'll probably have to grind up some more of that and throw it in here. Um, it doesn't get used as quickly as the scrap boxes, uh, so that's no no issue for me really. I think it's night. Let me sleep. And turn on my jetpack. I actually started doing a little bit of decoration upstairs. I took down the tree farm because we're running on blaze rods right now, so it's not really necessary. So here's what our court courtyard looks like at the present time. I made a little design on the top of the tank. You really can't see it on the mini map unless the tank is full though. But um, I figured since that's our, um, you know, we got some industrial craft machines over here, I go ahead and um, make a door there. And if I want to get out into the courtyard, I can just go through the Mistcraft portal and then come out the door. And then um, I'm going to attempt to dress this up somehow. I don't know how exactly. But I'm going to make an attempt, and I don't know what's going to go over here or over here. But um, neither of those areas are chunk-loaded at the present time, I believe. So it may be something that, uh, that doesn't require it to be loaded at all times. So if I decide I need the tree farm again, what I'll probably do is take a filler downstairs. Um, I put the blaze farm... I don't know if I showed you guys that. I don't think I did. I put the blaze farm way down here at the bottom. I ran some turtles a long time ago before I had the titanium or whatever I needed to make a quarry. And you can hear the blazes now. But basically I just made my standard, you know, blaze trap with water in all four corners and obsidian pipe in the center. I say mine like I came up with it. You know what I mean. It's the one I've used before. They go into my spare ender chest and everything comes up, goes through the sorting machine and then into the system. So I figure um, since this is all chunk loaded, I can just clear out some space down here, uh, bring some dirt and a bunch of torches or some nitor or something like that. If I ever want to run the tree farm, and I could just put the cargo manager over here and pump the stuff into the ender chest or put a tesseract on it and just tesseract all the stuff up there. So that's really all I wanted to accomplish this, accomplish this episode. Um, that basically, for the most part, should be totally automated solar panel creation. Um... We could do a test of that, but I, I don't know. I don't want to do it right now because I'd have to take so much stuff out of the system that I've been crafting by hand. Um, this part, the advanced alloys are not, they're not automatically created. So that's the one thing I haven't done. But these are automatically made. These are automatically made. The iridium iron ingots are automatically made and implosion compressed as we just set up. And, oh, I haven't done the thing to get the silicon cells yet either. So I only lack a couple of things, and I could just push a button and make a solar panel. Uh, so pretty soon I'm going to go ahead and make the switch. Uh, I'm going to leave these engines down here. 
because I've got the rolling machine downstairs and a couple of other uh, thermal expansion machines which are busy working right now. Uh, unfortunately, they're slower than the industrial craft counterparts, but as you know, I didn't have the resources to make them in the beginning of the game when I set all this up. Uh, so I've thought about switching over, but I believe that it takes up more disk space, so I'll have to make another 64K ME disk for the ores that are different, like the iron and the silver. I think the tin and the lead are different. And you cannot, I don't, I don't believe you can macerate lead. We can try that right now, but I don't think, I don't think you can do it. I don't even know if you can do an ingot. I think you have to pulverize that. Well, it'll macerate, but that's probably for Greg Tech. So I believe I read that you could not, um, could not macerate the lead or you actually had to pulverize it so at any rate I'm gonna have to leave the MJ down here for a while but um, I'm about ready to switch the AE system over to industrial craft energy EU and um, basically run it probably off solar what I think I'll probably do is um, I'll pop an MFSU right here in line and then a transformer and I want to say our system is using right around 140 AE units at oh, 150 um, which is 75 EU so it's not really that much um, considering so it shouldn't really be an issue if I have an MFSU there and a little array of solar panels shouldn't be a problem um, I may tap into the solar that's going to the matter fab, or I may just, you know, throw another couple out there. But either way, we're going to make the switch pretty soon. So I'm going to put some of this stuff back in here. And that is going to do it for this episode. Um, I, I talked to Sam last night. I showed him the settings for Fraps and Audacity and render settings for Vegas. Uh, he's about to start working on his base tour. So be on the lookout for that. If he does it on a day that I record, I'll make sure to mention it in a video. Uh, he's got a pretty cool base over there. Uh, he rebuilt everything around AE. So I believe just about everything gets done automatically or on demand either way. Uh, and I'll also, again, put the link to the world download in the video description. So if you guys have any questions or comments, suggestions, yada, 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 please leave them down below. Our tank still has not drained below that liquid detector, and I did not move the knot gate. I didn't get around to it. Um, I was kind of hoping that would happen right now so we could, you know, watch it in action. But whatever. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.